That is at the heart of all gambling devices and has the same effect. A pigeon can become a pathological gambler, a pathological gambler just as a person can. The 20th century was a time of great intellectual upheaval as new ideas about learning and education emerged and sparked fierce debate. At the heart of this controversy was one theory that challenged the traditional understanding of how people learn. Imagine being trapped in a small chamber with no control over your surroundings. Every, every move you make, make every, every behavior, behavior is being monitored and controlled by an unseen force. The lever or button you press releases a food or water reward. A playpen has been selected for our experimental environment because it is one to which the child is well acquainted. The unfamiliar additions include a food dispenser loaded with snacks and a plastic lever, which when pressed exposes a light causes the dispenser motor to sound, and produces the snack reinforcer. This is the chilling reality of the Skinner box, a tool of manipulation and control developed by the infamous psychologist B.F. Skinner in the 1930s. This experimental apparatus is designed to study the effects of reward and punishment on animal behavior, but it's not just rats and pigeons that are subject to its power. This box serves as a metaphor for the manipulation and control of the human mind. The first task was to isolate an individual piece of behavior and see how that could be changed. Skinner did this by keeping individual pigeons at about so that the birds were always hungry and food could be used as an automatic reward. The main thing is what, what we call schedules of reinforcement. Reinforcement is what the layman calls reward and you can schedule it uh, so that a reward occurs every now and then when a pigeon does something. Don't reinforce every time, you have every, perhaps every tenth time or perhaps only once every minute or something like that. There are very large number of, of schedules and they have their uh, special effects. There is a good and example of how you can move from uh, the, uh, the pigeon to the human case. And that is at the heart of all gambling devices and has the same effect. A pigeon can become a pathological gambler just as a person can. Skinner believed that this type of learning, in which an animal learns to associate a particular behavior with a consequence, is the basis of all behavior. He believed that the same principles could be applied to human behavior, and that it could be used to shape and control it. But as we delve deeper into the experimentation and research conducted within the walls of the Skinner box, we begin to uncover serious problems. The isolation and control of the environment in the Skinner box does not accurately reflect the complexity of real-world behavior, and the use of punishment, especially in human subjects, raises serious ethical concerns. As we continue to explore the world of the Skinner box, we can't help but question the true intentions behind its creation. Was it truly for the advancement of science, or was it a tool for manipulation and control? The answer remains shrouded in mystery, but one thing is for certain, the ethical assaults of the Skinner box cannot be denied. Now, the fact that we found that out with pigeons and could prove it by removing and changing the schedule makes it easy for us to interpret the case with the, the, human, the human subject. We, we don't say that the, the human subject uh, gambles to punish himself, as the Freudians might say, or gambles because he feels excited when he does so, nothing of, nothing of the sort. People gamble because of the schedule of the reinforcement that follows, and this is true of all gambling systems. They all have variable ratios built into them. 